devils, no dancing with devils, no fellow but rebels. Some digging with shovels, they digging, they digging, they digging real deep. Some humble, they harking, they listen, they meet. Some praise the most high seven days of the week. Some put in that work and go teach in the streets. Some just come to take up the air that we breathe. Some come just to take up the space that we need. Their spiritual levels, their spiritual levels, they come in on shapes in the sun. There's several. Judge chapter 8, verse 12. Right. And Yahweh shall again said it to them. Right. Then spoke Yahweh Shah again unto, unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. What does it say? I am the, the light, light of, of the, the world. world. Christ is the light of the world. So, and that's what he mean when he came and he sacrificed, uh, the most I sent him to be sacrificed. That's talking about he is the light of how you should feel. What you should do, how you should So you gotta do what he did. You gotta be living like he lived. Right? That's what a follower is. A follower is to say, oh yeah, this is such a great guy. Now I'm gonna do what I want to do. Right? A follower follows the footsteps. Uh reenacts what he does, right? That's what a follower is. If you're a follower, you're gonna do everything the person you're following does. Right? Um, this morning. He that follows me. What? He that follows me. He ain't saying who that just sit there and say, okay, yeah, uh, I know him and I just he's just one of he that follows me, right? Follow is key, man. Follow means you're doing the things that he done. You're following, you're trying to keep the commandments. He kept all of them, right? He read. Shall, shall not walk in darkness. Shall what? Shall, shall not walk in darkness. Shall not walk in darkness. He read. And, but shall have the light of light. Right, so this is the problem that you see a lot of people are walking in darkness. Uh, you gotta have this light. Now, Christ is saying keep the light. You have to follow his steps. Right, so what is the steps that he's talking about that's the light? We're going to get it right here, Proverbs 6. Go ahead and get that, Proverbs 6 and 23. Huh. This is Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. Right. It says, for the commandment is a lamp. Right. And the law is light. So the law is the light. These are the footsteps that Christ was walking in. He was walking in the law. He was doing things the right way, according to the Most High. He was doing uh, the commandments, the laws and the statutes. Right. Those are the steps which he walked. Right. Those are the steps you must follow to be Christ-like, right? Um, T. Reed? And the proofs of instructions are the way of life. And what? And the proofs of instructions are the way of life. So the proof of instruction is the way of life. That means you can be doing what you think is right, but you have to be reproved to follow these steps of Christ. You have to be reproved to follow the steps of the commandments and laws and statutes. When you veer off, when you make mistakes, when you sin, right? What brings you back to the Father is correcting and walking back in the right steps, right? Not continuing to do what you you, you want to do, right? right that makes you a follower of yourself. You're not following Christ if you do whatever you want to do. You're following Christ if you keep getting up, trying to follow and keep God's commandments, laws, and statutes, and being Christ-like, right? Um, that's what I mean? Yeah, All right, come on. Give me that song right there. Psalms chapter 18, verse 28. Give me Proverbs 3, right? For there will light my candle, right? The Lord and my God will light my darkness. Right, so the most high lightens your darkness. Right? When he gives you instruction, like the law, statutes, commandments, that's him lighting your darkness. Most likely didn't have to give us instruction. When he was in the Red Sea, when, uh, when, uh, after Moses went through the Red Sea, um, and they went to uh, uh, the Mount Horeb, he didn't have to give us instruction. Right? But he's giving us instruction. He's giving us, he's enlightening us, right? While others sit in darkness, he's giving us the light. So you gotta follow the light if you're gonna be Christ like. This is the problem that people uh confuse uh being a, a, a follower of Christ with not doing uh what the most I told you to do, which is just the man. If you're gonna follow Christ, you have to do this. You can't be a follower of Christ if you don't keep God's command. Those are two that's like saying you uh you shoot basketball. But you never even uh, had one in your hand. You're saying you're an NBA, I want to, I'm an NBA player, but you never even picked up a basketball, right? These are the steps you must follow. These are the things. If you want to be a basketball player, you must practice basketball. You must play the game. You must get hurt and get injured and get back up. And that's what you have to do if you're going to follow the whole side. You have to walk in these steps, which is his commandments, his law, his statute, his guidance, his light through the darkness, right? right? So you can see, right? Um, yeah. Alright, go ahead. Alright. This is Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 11. How y'all doing, brothers? Y'all believe in the Bible? You believe in the Bible? Yeah. Alright, 
believe in the Bible? Now give us a second. Y'all believe in the Bible? Yeah, I know. Take a flyer then, bro. Take a flyer. You take a flyer real quick? Alright. This is Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 11. Right. My son despise not the chastity mm -hmm. of the Lord. Right, so the Lord is telling you to not despise his correction. Not to despise the fact that he's giving you light. He's giving you the commandments. That's what a lot of people do. They despise the commandment. They despise the guidance, right? You have to have the chastisement. You have to have the correction. You have to know right from wrong. That's what this society is about. This society is about telling you wrong, right? Telling you wrong is okay and right is, is wrong, right? So you must follow the guidelines. You must follow the steps. And that's what most people don't. Most people don't want to adhere to the most high's rule, right? Um, keep reading. It says, neither be wary of his correction. What does it say? Neither be wary of his correction. See, this is the thing. You can't be wary of the Most High's correction. You have to receive his correction. That means that the Most High told you to not heal. You can't go out and heal. That's, some, that's something evil and something people can understand. But when God is telling you to do these other things, you're like, oh, yeah, that's not the wrath. No, it's all of it, man. You must continue to try to serve the Most High with all your heart, with all your soul. You can't do that if you're not following the footsteps of the Son, man. You don't really believe in the Son, right? Um... It's on there? It's on there, okay. Alright. Alright, alright. I gave you all. Um, read Proverbs 3 and 11. Proverbs 3 and 11. Okay. steps of Christ, which walking in the steps of Christ is walking within the guidelines of the Most High's commandments, laws, and statutes. That's how you follow God. That's what it's always been, right? Why do you think when Christ came, he was the confusion? Because when Christ came, he was the image of everything that needed to be done, of everything that was to be a follower of God. He did it perfectly, right? So, that's what the law was to teach you of someone that, could, an actual person that did it, right? And, uh, and, and what's the, that you can actually see and, and you can read his life and follow the steps when he was tempted, he was tried, he made the right decision. Like you might not always make the right decisions, right? But the thing is, you got the God, right? you got the light, you got the steps. That's why he said, He that follows me, you have the light. Is that simple? Oh, um, this morning? I have a little bit. This morning? Yeah. Good. It's like, that they may see your good work. That they what? They may see your good work. So when people, this is how you tell if you're a follower of Christ. Everyone says they're Christian, right? Everyone says they're a follower of Christ. But the way you show that you're a follower of Christ is walking in this light. Man. When you walk in the light, people see your good work. And when they see your good work, they know you're a follower not by your mouth and what you say, uh, but by your actions and what you do, right? Oh, um, this morning. And glorify your father. Mm. So when you do what the most in heaven, when you do what the most I tell you to do, you glorify your father. When you do what you want to do and how you feel, who are you glorify? You glorify yourself, right? You glorify how you feel, right? That's how you serve the father in general. How you serve the father is by going to what he told you to do. Uh. That's how you be a servant. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. That's on that. Go ahead. All right, this is Baruch, chapter 4 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. It says, this is the book of the commandments of Yahweh, 
and the law that endured forever. Read that again from the top. This is Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. It says, This is the book of the commandments of Yahweh. This is the book of the commandments of God. This is what you got to understand. This whole, uh, the, the scriptures say that this was for wisdom, right? That this scriptures are, will enlighten you, right? The reason why it's enlightening is because these are the books of the commandments. These are the books that give you the enlightenment. These are the books that you learn from. Like we were just talking about sight. And you see the test trial. People came and tested him. Right? Tried to trick him. Right? So you have an example. All of this was written for an example. Right? And, and, and what is the example? The example is the guideline of what you should do. Not how you should feel. And that's what it's turned into is how you, should, how you feel about God. When it's, this is what you do for God. This is what a servant, a servant doesn't become a servant based on how we feel. He's a servant based on what he does. How does he help his master, right? So how do you help your master? You help your master by obeying his commands, by taking heed unto his word, right? Um, and it says, in the law that endures forever. And this what? And the law that endures forever. So this law, these guidelines that God said, endure forever. How you doing, brother? You believe in the Bible, brother? Now, now, I see, why you believe in the Bible? You just believe because everybody else believe in it? Why you believe in it? Feel? All right, so when you feel, how do you feel? How do you show that you feel God? What I'm saying is, okay, yeah, that's a point. But what I'm saying is, how do you show God that you feel Him? Follow His path. Now, what is God's path? His way. Now, what? Exactly. So, can I get one verse to show you what His way is? What the Bible say His way is? What the Word say His way is? Matthew 7 and 13. Real quick. So his way, let's talk about God's way. Real quick, brother. Just give me just one second. All right. I ain't going to hold you all day. Uh, uh, yeah. 7 and 13. Matthew chapter 7. And verse 13. Right. Into the spring gate. So enter into the spring gate. Can you read? For wide is the gate and it leads to destruction. Read it again for the top. Enter ye in the spring gate. Right. For wide is the gate. Right. And broad is the way that leads to destruction. So broad is the way which leads to destruction. So what you see everyone else doing is always the wrong way. This is what the scripture says. Well, what the majority and the mass do. It's always wrong, right? Three. And many that be which go there in. So you got many, many people do the wrong way. If you look at Christian, Christianity, Islam, all these major religions, right? And you see everyone say they believe in God, say they're Christian, and right? But what God is saying is that the broad way is wrong, right? So what is it telling you that all these mainstream things are wrong? Understanding of Proverbs huh. 23. Yeah. Uh, this is Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. Right? For the commandment is a lamp. For the commandment is a lamp. What does a lamp do? Yeah, and it gives light, right? Can you read? And the law is light. So the law is light. So you can see. Can you read? And the reproofs of instructions are the way of light. So this is what you gotta understand is to be on this narrow path, you have to have the light. 
You have to be enlightened. And the only way you can be enlightened is if you follow what God says. Everyone say they follow what God says, but God has commandments, right? He got commandments for what you what you do on certain days. He got commandments to celebrate Christmas, brother, and, and have a, a, a Christmas tree. And, and um, say a, a white man came through the chimney, a big man came. Where is that in the Bible? But how many Christian people say they serve God and they're members of Christianity because they celebrate Christmas every year? A lot. So who are they really serving? Are they serving this God or who are they serving? This is what I'm saying. So <laughs> give him a flyer. Get a flyer real quick. Bro. I know you got to go. Give him a flyer real quick. Hey, our information on the phone. All right? Good. All right, what were we saying? Uh, yeah, Baruch. So uh, like, four, all right, this is Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. It said, This is the book of the commandments of Yahweh. Just like we were just telling the brother, this whole Bible is about the, 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 the commandments and the path that God wants you to go down. His people, right? It's very clear, right? And it's about the trials and the tribulations that comes with trying to serve God and trying to follow the narrow path. Can you read? It says, and the law that endures forever. No, just for a little bit. And the law that endures forever. No, just until when Christ comes back. And the law that endures forever. So this, this thing endures forever. This is always going to be set forth as an example of righteousness and wickedness, right? That's why they try to tell you, oh, yeah, homosexuality is cool. No, this, the Bible don't say that, man. Right? It didn't, hey, God didn't change it. No, no, you can do that now. Now, that's cool with me. You know, no, he's, he's, he did what he did with Sodom and Gomorrah for an example. He literally says he did it for an example to future generations who should think that they can do that and get away with it, right? How you doing, sister? You believe in the Bible? I do. You got time for something you believe in? I'm good, thank you. Okay. Have a good read. day. It says, all they that keep it shall come to life. What does it say? All that they keep it shall come to life. Right. They're talking about the narrow way which leadeth unto life, the Matthew 7, right? And he says, oh, this is the narrow way. This is the key. This is what I want to get to with the brother. All they that keep it shall come to their life. That's the narrow path. The commandments, the laws, the statutes. That's what makes you different. Uh, make, uh, even from the beginning, that's what made us. If that scripture, you go back to 7 Keep that scripture. You know the one that uh, tell them uh, that this is what uh, put us apart from the evil. set us apart. Uh, you basically saying that. This would be wisdom in the sight of the nation. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, just showing forth that this is what gives us the difference. This is what sets us apart. The children of God. The only thing that sets the children of God apart from everyone else is that we give. We we not only been given the instruction, but we're trying to live the instruction, right? Um, go ahead. Keep reading. What's so long, brother? <laughs> All right, now, brother. Yeah, it's good to see you too, brother. Shalom, shalom, okay. shalom. Shabbat shalom for us, but you know. <laughs> it says, but such as leave it shall die. But such as what? But such as leave it shall die. But such as leave it shall die. So if you leave it, that's when you go on that broad path. We were just talking about Matthew 7. You leave this narrow path, you go to the broad path, and you're going to die. Death is in the masses. Contrary to popular belief, God said the God says the majority of people are walking in the broad path. And we just read the broad path is going to lead you to death. Not following the narrow way of life, which is commandments, is a way to of death, right? Um, Kiri. Uh, let's sit on that. Let's sit on that. All right. Um, get that. Yeah, we're on chapter four, verse five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Behold, I have talked to you. Statue and judgment, mm -hmm. even as my God, right? Yahweh commanded me that you should do so in the land where you go to possess it, right? Keep therefore and do them. What does it say? Keep therefore and do them. Now, why is he saying to keep therefore and do them? Here he, this is your wisdom. This is your what? Your wisdom. This is your wisdom. This is what separates you. This is what makes you a man of wisdom from a beast, right? This is the only thing that separates a man from a beast. Right? Keep reading. And your understanding. And your what? And your understanding. This is how you even understand it. Keep reading. In the sight of the nation. Right. So this is what makes you different from everybody else. Right? You, you're not made different by saying you just believe in Christ. Uh, you're made different from following after the footsteps of Christ. Right? By doing the word. 
by being an action is a thing that people don't want to do anymore, man. No one's a man in their word anymore. I always keep a plan. God says that you must have the action. You can't just be talking, oh, I love God so much, I love Christ so much. We already know love is a word of action, right? And you show forth that love by taking heed unto God's word. Wow. Not by taking heed unto your feelings and your emotions and what you think and how you thought something should have happened. But taking heed to the Almighty. That's what they call him the Almighty. Right? Oh. Um, that's on that? Here come. Alright, you that's it on your yeah. second address 15 and 4. Second address 15 and 4. Where are we left off at? And you give me Proverbs 13 and 1. Proverbs 13 and 1. Second address 15 and verse 4. Right? For all the unfaithful mm -hmm. shall die in their unfaithful. So, hey, look, this is what people get confused about faith. Right? When you have the faith, you're going to have the action, right? When you have the faith, you're going to show forth the works. This is what the Bible said. Uh, James said, he said, show me your faith without your work. You can't show faith when, if you really have the faith, what, when um, Abraham well, was in a foreign land, <laughs> how did he show forth his faith? Did he just say, yeah, I really believe in that God. No, he showed forth his faith by saying everywhere he was going, by, by the sacrifice of son. He showed forth his faith with action. All right? You can say you believe all day. And you, say, you can say you have the faith. But how you show forth your faith is in the action. And that's why I said all the unfaithful, the ones who don't have the action, the ones who really don't believe. God is saying you say you believe you're good. Right? That's what they say with the fast Hey, that's what the Catholic tell you. Uh, <laughs> You have to live this, man. This is a life path, right? You can go through ups and downs. You can go through trials and tribulations, right? It's not like, oh, y'all, I'm going to just do this and I'm good. No, it's a, an everyday uh, feeling of getting up and trying to do the most I told you to do, right? Um, keep, keep reading. You heard it on that? All right, you got that Proverbs 13. All right. This is Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 1, right? A wise son heareth his father's instruction. So if that's what we just said. We just we just read that this is your wisdom, right? In the sight of the nations. Now God says that a wise son is going to listen to his father's instruction. But why do you listen to your father's instruction? Because you know what your father is. You know that your father knows what he's talking about. Right? On a human level. So how much more the father is greater on earth? Right? The one who's giving you everything, the one who created everything. Right? Can you read? It says, but a scorner mm -hmm. hears not rebuke. Right, so this is the problem, man. People don't want to hear rebuke. People don't want to be told they're wrong. If I ask a hundred people out here, is everyone, if they got it figured out, all of them will say, yeah, I got it all figured out. <laughs> or it might be one of them saying, well, I'm tripping right now. Right. So this is, this is the thing. People don't want to receive rebuke, and that's what's required when you're serving the most high. That if you did this, you sinned. Okay, I can't do that no more. It's not like, well, I, I, I might do it, but you're going to still serve God. No, it's, you got to change. Uh, right? And that's what people don't want to hear. Everyone wants to hear that they're right, everything's okay, and that they're doing good. I got to know you're not doing good if you're not following after. Trying to follow after what God told you to do. Right? Is that simple? No. Um, yeah. Is it on that? Sure. All right, go ahead. What else? Yeah. Oh, okay. Proverbs hey, chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou will receive my word. If you what? That will receive my word. You gotta receive God's word. You know how many people got a Bible? And they're reading it, but they're not receiving. What is a re receiving? I love, I love the word receiving. Like when you got a wide receiver uh, at football, uh, playing football, he catches the football, he holds it, right? That's what a reception is. You gotta fully take it in, right? It's the same thing with. Scripture is saying you have to receive instruction. That means actually take in what God is telling you to do. Not just read it and say, oh, yeah, that's cool. That was my story back then. I wonder what David was. Why David did that? <laughs> no. It's receiving. When you see these things, all these things require an example of what to do when in trouble, when in a question. The commandments were given us for our life. You mean? And I, my commandments, Within thee. Right, so it says, hide your commandments within you. That means that should be the most critical part within you. That's what makes you feel when you just read it. Right? So you have to hide your commandments within you. That means you should keep the commandments close to you. That means what makes you 
It's a fine line for being a follower of God and being a follower of yourself, being a regular man. And that fine line is the commandments of God. You either follow God's commandments or trying to follow God's commandments, or you do what you want to do. Or you do what other people are telling you to do. Right? Um, can you read this on it? So that the that they may incline their ear into wisdom. Mm-hmm. So that's how you incline your ear into wisdom is by taking heed into the most high's command. By doing the words that's in the book. By not just reading them, not just hearing pastors talking and you know, play the songs behind it. Same as these. No, you gotta actually do it, man. It's not a show. You can only take it for so long, right? Until your true intent of your heart are shown before everyone. Right? Uh, That's how the scriptures say all things will be revealed. Right? right? You got all these pastors that are swearing that they, they're really these followers of God, apostles, and all these major things, man. And the most high school show for whether those things are true or not. Right? Um, here we go. My son, forget not my law, mm-hmm. but let their heart mm-hmm. keep my commandments. So the scriptures say your mind must keep God's commandments. Your mind should be thinking about God's commandments. When it comes to decision making, whether you go left, or whether you go right, you should think of what? God's commandments. When it's things that's not even necessarily written in commandments, because you were just talking about this, you have to have an uh, understanding of God's commandments to even make an informed decision on whether that's what the judges were for. Right? right? So if things were outside of the word and there wasn't really a law on it, you have to use the law to come to an informed decision on what you think you should do in that situation. You gotta keep it in your mind so you make the right decisions, man. This is why you see all these other people out here serving the other God. This is why they out there celebrating Christmas. Because the law is not in their mind, right? You're not thinking about God's laws and commandments. You're thinking of, oh, well, it's Christmas, baby. Let's do what everyone else does. That's gotta be of God, right? That's God's birthday. <laughs> Didn't you know he came in the winter? But when the Bible says he came in the spring, right? Better time of life. Come on now, man. When the chef, when the uh, sheep were in the field, it's the thing you gotta take heed to, man, and understand. Right? Um, uh, read. Yeah, All right. You want to something? Proverbs seven one. Proverbs seven one. Actually, give me something. Yeah, give me Proverbs seven one. Give me Proverbs nineteen and nineteen. Proverbs nineteen and nineteen. This is the problem, man. You gotta show for faith. And so forth, belief is only in action. It's all the way you feel when you tempt or you try. Uh, sorry, 19 and 19. When problems arise, when things come your way, then is a man really known. Right? When temptations are in front of you, when uh, uh, when it's your time to prove your belief in God, that's when your heart is known. And in those moments, when you make the wrong decisions, those are things you gotta get better at. Because you know what those, those moments are. And each and every one of your lives, right? Oh. Summary 19 and 19. Alright. Chapter 18, verse 19. No. The knowledge of the commandments of the most high is the doctrine of life. So this is the good doctrine, man. This is this is what you you know the, the Christian church, I don't even know how to deal with something. This is the doctrine of life. Everything else is death. We're not speaking about what do you think Christ did? He said he's life. Why? Because he kept all the commandments. He was a living example, right? He was sent. He's an embodiment of the commandments, the laws, the statutes, and the most high right? So this is these things are written for your understanding to know of what you are doing. Uh, you read? And they that do them, mm. they that do them, that please him. Yeah, they they do things that please him, which is keeping his commandments. Shall receive the fruit of the tree of the mortality. So those are the ones that are gonna have eternal life. Those are the ones that's gonna live forever. You read the Bible, and people said, I believe in Jesus is born. Or people who showed up in church every Sunday. Or people that had the biggest garments or the biggest robe on. Or the super people who thought they were better than everyone. It's the ones who are following this word. The ones who take heed unto the most high scripture. And they take heed unto his commandments, his laws, his statutes. Change them doing what they want to do and go to what the most high told them to do. That's why Christ said, that's how you become a new creature. 
Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. My son, keep my words mm -hmm. and lay up my commandments with thee. Right, so you say, my son, keep words and lay up your commandments. This speaker said, hold it close to you. Let it always be there. Right? Keep your word. Right? Because when you keep your word, you're going to keep your commandments. Right? Mm -hmm. Hold it close to you. Right? Because you're going to keep your commandments. Right? Mm -hmm. Hold it close to you. Right? Because you're going to keep your commandments. Right there, he's telling you what, what did he say right there? Read that again. He says, my son, Keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. So he's saying that lay up your com his commandments with you, right? So here we're saying again, through all the uh, turmoil, oh, yeah. tribulation you go through, through all the problems, Most High is telling you to lay up his commandments with you, right? That means you gotta constantly be thinking about God in your mind. Because if you don't, Satan is right there to deceive you, man. He's waiting on the people who don't take heed to the commandments, right? He's waiting on the people who don't know wrong from right, right? So you have to understand, have the wisdom. That's what the wisdom is, right? Um, this morning, yeah, verse two, I think. Uh, verse two, keep my commandments and live. And and what? And live. And what? And live. So this is life. Again, we're seeing the same thing. It's just like saying following Christ to live, right? Because if we're following Christ, we're going to be keeping God's commandments, right? That's, these things are synonymous. Which means the same, right? Go ahead. It says, and my law as the apple of thine eye. And the what? And the law as the apple of thine eye. Here we say God says, have his law as the apple of your eye, right? Because the apple of your eye is the something that your eyes are concerned with, something that's on the top of your mind, right? Something when you wake up in the morning, this is what you're thinking about. The apple of your eye means this is what you're concerned with in life, right? It's like God, uh, the apple of God's eye would be Israel, right? The people in which he brought up from uh, Egypt, right? Uh, this morning, or is it? It's in the code. Okay, go ahead. Thanks, uh, James chapter 4, verse 3, right? Ask him to see not. Humble yourself. Mm -hmm. James chapter 4, verse 10. Right. Humble yourself in the sight of the Most High. What did it say? Humble yourself in the sight of your house. This is the main, main thing that stops people from actually serving the Most High. Stop all people from serving the Most High. Which is humbling themselves. You gotta humble yourself. You gotta admit your own. You gotta admit all the time you've been to church, all the things you thought you had a connection with God with. All the things you thought you was doing correctly was wrong. And how hard is that for a lot of people? It's very hard for a lot of people. Here's why the Lord said the meek and the humble is going to inherit the earth. The Lord said the humble down under his might is going to inherit the blessings, the eternal life. Because you have to humble down to keep God's commandments to inherit the eternal life. Right? Only way you're going to have it. You can't do what you want to do and think you're going to have a spot. You don't work like that, man. You're not even in the That's why he said going to be some people where he said, I never even knew you. And why did he say he didn't know him? He said, because they were, wor they were workers of iniquity, right? Workers of iniquity means they committed sin. They weren't keeping God's commandments. They weren't trying to follow his laws and his statutes, right? Um, this morning? Yeah. 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 Speak no evil. 
Yeah, speak not evil one to another. Submit yourself unto his word. And submit yourself to his word is taking heed unto his commandments, his laws and his statutes. It's that simple. Um, and that's that's the that's the common denominator between a person that's serving God and someone who's doing their own thing. Right? Doesn't matter what religion you under, what uh uh, uh who's teaching you, whatever you think in your head, whoever's your pastor or whatever they go into, or whatever they think. If you're not doing this. You haven't even begun to peel back the layers of God. You can't even know God until you know what He commands you to do. You can't even go to understand God until you hear the laws and the statutes, right? So you even know what God is about, and it's evident by the holy days to uh, uh, celebrate here in America, by the holidays, by the things we do, the way we act, the way we talk, Man. the way we live, all oh, things all contrary to God, the way what we wear, right? Uh. What we eat. Down to the very simple things. That's why the most I said this is that great whore. The uh -huh. Babylon, Babylon is great. Who, who's here to take us away from everything that's good, right? Man. To get us drunk with this wine, man. And the wine is sin, man.